We start off from up north because there's been heavy fighting in the Janga community, a community near Waliwali in the northeast region, with seven people already reported dead. Unconfirmed reports say the fighting is a chieftaincy related matter. Uh, let's take you there now uh, for more uh, details on this development. Joining us is correspondent uh, Elias Tanko, who's uh, in the north. East region for us. Uh, Elias, thank you. Uh, just bring us up to speed, first of all, on what's happening there as we speak. Elias, if you can hear me, I'm just asking you to bring us up to speed with, with this, uh, I mean, gruesome murder that we're hearing of, of at least uh, some five persons. What more is happening there as, as we well, speak? Well, Blazer, this uh, violence uh, erupted in the community of Lukula and several other nearby communities. And tension has been brewing in this particular community since last Monday um, between the two traditional areas, the Wasipe traditional area uh, in the North Gonja district and the So traditional area in the West Mampresi municipality of the Northeast region. And it's as a result of a several communities fighting over several communities who has the right to control uh, these particular communities. And we understand that on Monday, there was preparation uh, to bring uh, to the community a rival chief by the Gonjas. Uh, this prompted the Mampri society to uh, attempt to stop uh, the arrival of this particular rival chief to the community. And this uh, renewed the tension in that particular community. We understand police personnel were deployed, including officials or personnel of the national security and the tension was brought under control. And uh, there was, uh, uh, I mean, um, there was, um, um, th there was uh, a report or there was a warning by the national security personnel that all our men should leave this particular, but this particular community. And uh, only this dawn, we understand the armed men came there resulting in this particular clashes as we speak. Uh, we understand the clashes that are still ongoing in these particular communities. Uh, allegedly, seven people have been killed, including uh, a local chief uh, from the Mampro Society, who uh, currently, we understand, the police have picked the dead bodies and they are taking them to uh, Damango, the regional capital of the Savannah region. Uh, and I'm just we wondering at this point, what, what it is that the uh, Savannah or, I mean, uh, the Northeast uh, Regional Security Council is uh, doing about the situation, knowing that there were signals uh, a couple of days earlier? Well, I've been in touch with the Northeast Regional Minister, and he has been telling me that because of the strict assurance he got from the security on the ground, uh, uh, he was uh, very certain or hopeful that the situation would not escalate, unfortunately. Uh, we are seeing escalation of uh, this particular situation. Uh, what we are learning is that the security, the both security council, the Savannah Regional Security Council and the Northeast Regional Security Council uh, are currently in a meeting. Uh, we understand the police there are not able to protect or to prevent the violence because of the small number of the personnel in there. And so we understand the security council is making preparation to send more men to these particular communities where violence is currently raging. We understand uh, more than half of the community members have fled. Uh, they started fleeing the community yesterday. I can confirm that several people are currently in communities in the West Mampresi municipality of the Northeast region fleeing this particular violence. And as I speak to you now, reports from eyewitnesses and community members still indicate that the violence is still ongoing in the local community. Uh, is there any indication as to whether or not there may be, uh, in the coming day, some restriction on the movement of persons within the community as, as part of the security measures? Well, as part of the measures to douse the tension in the first place, the national security was involved. And like I said, they gave a uh, clear indication as of uh, yesterday, they, they gave clear indications that all uh, traditional milit militants, if you like, or uh, armed men should leave that particular area. But it appears the armed men did not heed to this directive by the national security. And so it, as I speak right now, it will be very difficult to see how the security is able to control the situation. Because like I said, the tension started on Monday 
uh, they were not able to control it, and we are seeing escalation of violence. So it will be very difficult to see how the security is going to manage this issue. I, I believe you've been engaging residents of the area. Well, what's their feeling and, and what's the appeal to authorities? Well, this is not the first time that violence have occurred in this particular community, but this uh, dispute is happening uh, since 2019. And uh, they are already aware of the situation. And like I said, many people are fleeing the community. Uh, as I speak to you now, we have not been able to uh, speak uh, with these particular fleeing residents. But we can tell that a lot of them are fleeing. Uh, as to speak, we are told more than 60 to 50, 50 to 60 houses uh, have been burned. And it's a very difficult situation for the residents there. Uh, of course, Ilyaso will definitely uh, get in touch with you once that meeting is uh, done with uh, by the Northeast uh, Regional Security Council. But I, I want to bring in now uh, Dr. Adam Mona, who's a security analyst. And Doc, you've been looking at the developments within the area. 60 houses been. Uh, that's uh, more or less hundreds of families being displaced from that community. Uh, what immediate security measures would you want to see uh, from the Regional Security Council? Uh, and also, uh, I mean, looking at the scale of the clashes, the National Security Council should equally be concerned about this, you agree? Oh, yes, I agree. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, mine is that 60 houses, if you know these areas very well, especially as you drift, as you move uh, northwards, you know, you know, move towards the northern part of this country, 60 houses, that, that would amount to probably two communities put together, uh, you know, because these are predominantly farming communities. And so if uh, you are talking about 60 houses bent, that is very serious. And within 24 hours, uh, less than 24 hours, 60 houses bent, and half of the community I'm um, hearing, you know, uh, flee, already gone, you know, run out of the community. That is not very good. But I am reliably informed when your producer reached out to me, uh, my checks, you know, the quick checks I did indicate that they have men, you know, uh, uniformed men and, you know, uh, some equipment, security equipment being moved towards the place. And so I'm very hopeful that probably in, before uh, midnight, we'll, you know, there will be an uh, officer would have more boots on the ground uh, to calm the situation down. And I am also, I've spoken to uh, those who are supposed to be running the region and running, uh, it is not northeast. That actually politically comes under uh, what you call a savanna. This area falls under savanna. Mm. And so uh, probably you might have to reach out to the savanna regional minister, uh, you know, Honorable Said, to know what they are doing. But I, and, uh, you know, speaking to the region, those who manage the region, uh, a lot is going on in terms of security. They are putting some more effort into uh, getting more personnel onto the ground. But it is unfortunate because then these are two tribes, the Mampuses and the Gonges. And when you have, if it is not, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, the same tribe fighting among themselves and it is uh, inter-ethnic uh, or inter-tribal conflict, it can quickly degenerate, quickly degenerate if you, under, if you understand the topography of the place. And so... I am hopeful that national security with those who run the region politically and uh, in terms of security would have to do a lot, especially when, uh, you know, we are getting into, uh, you know, the, the, everywhere is going to be dark very soon. I think they would have to do more. Uh, we'll, we'll say a curfew be, far, be far-fetched if we have that directive coming through. I think a curfew wouldn't be bad. I would recommend a curfew. But you know the way curfew administratively is undertaken. It has to come from, you know, uh, the, the DC, the MC, or probably the, region, the regional minister. They would have to request, a, you know, for a curfew to be imposed. And so uh, I am hoping that between now and probably, uh, what's it, the time now, 6 p.m., if they have to be careful, they need to do that as soon as possible because uh, they need to put in some measures whilst awaiting more 
officers on the ground. I'm told some more police officers and some more equipment are moving into the place, which is good, hoping that if there is a curfew, uh, the situation would have calmed or to, you know, in a way, before, uh, you know, the massive arrival of uh, men and women in boats, you know, on the ground. Because it's the man process and the gunjas, and this is more to do with some land, some chieftaincy, you know, land relating to chieftaincy, uh, and when you see land relating to chieftaincy, and also, uh, by extension, at the same time, relating to two, two tribes, two, you know, distinct tribes, then you know it's a very uh, sensitive, very complex issue that needs to be dealt with. Because then you can't say, is there the chieftaincy alone? The chieftaincy is, at, is, 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 in, is in one leg. You have, the, you have also land in one leg, and you have two tribes. And so uh, it's a very complex issue, mm. very sensitive issue, and, and, and indeed, needs to be handled. And indeed, given the hydra-headed nature of this, uh, it, it's the reason for which experts are worried, including your lines, as to uh, what, what the best possible approach may be in dealing with this matter. But, but if you have one, where do we start from? Well, what I, I think uh, the, the Yagbonra versus Nairi, because this has to do with the two of them are the top. The two of them literally are the top. They, you know, Yagonra himself and the Nairi, because they, they control these areas. And those who are fighting are supposed to be, excuse me to say, they are subjects. Okay? And so they would have to probably begin to look at it and ask themselves, why should, you know, our people kill one another because of a certain chieftaincy title, a certain chieftaincy issue or land issue. Once that is done, then the criminal aspect of the issue, for me, some, you know, uh, since this Boku issue reignited, it is almost as if it is spreading to various communities. So if we are not very careful and we begin to have a second Boku opening up close by, then it becomes difficult to control the situation. Because then you are talking about man process, you are now talking, already you have man process versus, versus what do you call it, uh, Kusasis and Boku. Now you have Gonjas versus man process. So if we don't deal with this issue, you know, with the speed that is required, we are going to probably have a lot of issues to deal with. It will be difficult to control. So I would say that Nairi, Yagon Radis, that these two big chiefs should sit at a round table and resolve these things whilst the security you know, uh, agencies deal with it, hoping that uh, the president and his lieutenant will probably put in a lot more effort in dealing with uh, this issue. I mean, for me, I would say that if these two big chiefs in this area or these areas sit and call their troops to order, tell them stop, while they go into what is the nagging issue that needs to be resolved, then the criminal aspect of it, because there are those who are selling firearms, those who are who call themselves warriors, and they are usually sometimes paid to go and fight. It doesn't depend on whose side they are fighting. They are paid to go and fight. So once the two chiefs say, no, stop, then those who are paid to go and fight, they begin, the police begin to run them up. They probably begin to find a permanent solution to some of these unfortunate incidents in this part of the country. Okay, then we're still paying a close attention to this. We'll leave it for now. Uh, Dr. Adam Buna joining us uh, on the latest from Lukula. I was